It's so exciting. Lindsay here, the frugal crafter, in a law in a different venue here. I'm practically sitting on top of my wireless router so that we can get the clearest broadcast from the Willowax that we could possibly get, because as you know, slow internet in Maine. But I've got some really great guests on today, and they are going to help you with your die cutting questions. I did grab a few from the old events page. So um, if you left a question, hopefully I got it. If not, you can type it in the There's chat the section. Crafter in a ball in a different venue here. I'm practically or on the. Oh, hold on a second. I have to mute my page. Sorry, guys. Live and all. It's a. Uh, it's crazy. Wax that we could possibly get because as you. Know, there we go. Unmuted. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I knew it was going to be something. Um, so anyway, I have some wonderful guests here today who are going to help you guys um, with your die cutting questions. I felt like my video the other day about die cutting was um, a little lacking. I basically just wanted to get information to you guys about manual die cutters, the kind you crank your dies through when you use embossing folders with. Um, and the difference between those and electronic die cutters, which basically cut a computer file um, from, you know, from your computer onto paper. And um, since there are so many electronic die cutters out there, and the one that I use is quite old, I felt that I was a little biased in my video, and I wanted to make sure you guys had a fair and balanced understanding of the different machines that are out there so that you can make an informed choice if you go to purchase one, or um, hopefully... Maybe it can help you decide whether you want to go manual or you want to go electronic. Or um, also, maybe even get you using the one you have, because I did see some questions from people who uh, had invested in an electronic cutter, but they feel intimidated to actually use it. So I'm hoping that with the wonderful um, guests here that you will be a little clearer in your die cutting um, adventures, I guess, to go on. So I'm going to, one by one, introduce all of our guests. First up, we have the fabulous Melody Lane, who I'm sure most of you know already. She's from Melody Lane Designs, a very popular YouTuber in the die cutting space. Um, Melody, you want to tell a little bit about yourself and what you use for a cutter? Um, well, I'm a Cricut product expert, so I use the Cricut. I um, have also tried the Silhouette, and um, for the manual machines, I like the Evolution Advanced machine. Why is that? I <laughs> I like the dial on it. It has a dial for all the different brands of embossing folders and die cuts and everything. So it's really easy to turn the dial to it changes the size, you know, of the item you're putting through it. And it folds up and doesn't take up a lot of room like the cuddle bug does. Oh wow! Now, how wide is the um, how wide of a die can you put through the evolution? I think six inches. And so you don't need to deal with the shims and the sandwiches because you can adjust the pressure. Right. Yes. Okay. Now, does that work with the magnetic platform that everybody likes? Yes. Yeah. Oh well, cool. Um, all right. Also, we have uh, Karen, the Scrappy Diva, also another popular YouTube YouTuber. Hi, Karen. What machine? Hi like and um, tell us a little bit about yourself. So my name is Karen and you can find me on YouTube as Scrappy Diva. Um, and what I do is a lot of YouTube tutorials on all the different die cutting machines. I'm also a Cricut product expert. Um, but I was also teaching a lot of silhouette classes because I had fallen out of love with Cricut. Uh, went to the silhouette. So I'm, I'm teaching that quite a bit. I'm also teaching the Cricut now, um, as well as Scal shortcuts a lot because you can use that with all the different uh, die cutting machines and behind me you can see my big one the 24 inch it's a GCC Puma but uh, a GCC uh, quite a few people will have a, a GCC product um, what's it called the yellow one I forget um, that one's quite popular the gazelle maybe is that the one no no I forget what it is now expert GCC expert something like that. anyway it's a big yellow black and yellow machine are your classes online? Are they uh, YouTube classes, or do you teach at a um, an mm -hmm. online class store? No, nope. all online YouTube classes. Wow, awesome! 
And last but not least, we have Joe Rotella from Create and Craft. Joe, tell us a little bit about what you do and what machines you like to use. <clears throat> well, this isn't my full-time job crafting, so I'm in my office now in my for my real job, but for my fun job, I love crafting. And you'll find me at speaking at CHA and all over the web and Pinterest and Google and our website. <clears throat> I would have to say that right now my favorite machine is the KNK Zing, and that's sort of what the Zing looks like. You'll see pictures out there of, of me with it. Um, they have a bigger machine that is called the Max. I have one of those as well. I really like that. And they have a new machine coming out. We, I can only show you these six secret pictures. That's is all we have. Um, but it's a real pretty, pretty machine. It's got two heads you can see, and the cool thing is the heads work like a Dremel, and here it is carving eighth of an inch wood. It'll carve eighth of an inch acrylic as well. So these are my new favorite toys. Um, would be that one that's coming out, but, but you can't have that one yet. That one's just coming soon. So uh, I would say those are my, my favorites is the KNK family. Thank you so much. And I see we have Julie Fafen Balzer has joined us. Yay, Julie. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and what you use for a machine. And Julie is also the fabulous designer behind Balzar Designs. So Julie, tell us about yourself. So, hi. Uh, my name is Julie Fafen Balzer. And um, I am, uh, I'm, I'm a spokesperson for the Brothers Scan and Cut, and the Scan and Cut is the only electronic cutter out there that has that built-in scanner, which allows you to perfectly place things. It means that there's no computer, there's no cartridges, and so really, for me, the thing that I like about the Scan and Cut is it takes all the things that are great about a machine that has built-in designs, because now with the Scan and Cut 2, there are more than 600 built-in designs, but also it means that you, anything you scan in, like you see a piece of clip art, you see a drawing and a coloring book you like, you draw something, you create something, you can cut it, and it cuts virtually anything up to two millimeters thick. So we're talking about stencil material. Uh, there's a new silicone stamp kit. You can make phone stamps. You can cut leather. Um, I was a person who never thought I wanted a die cutting machine, so this has sort of been a revelation that I love it. I don't know. Should I keep talking until Lindsay gets back? <laughs> Uh, and uh, so Scan and Cut 2 has a lot of the things that people always ask for in a Scan and Cut. So like it reads SVG files now. Um, it also, it does uh, color scanning. So it used to be that you'd have to stamp like black on a white background in order to perfectly cut out your stamps. But now, you know, you can stamp blue onto a black background and it can still detect between the blue and the black because it doesn't need to have the grayscale difference, it only needs to have the color difference. So I could wax poetic for a while. And I will also mention that I do have a traditional die cutting machine, one of the big um, ones that you rotate through. And I actually use that as a mini printing press. That's my favorite way to use it because essentially that's what it is. So I do a little bit of, you know, more traditional yeah, printing sorry to interrupt you. I've got like a kid calling you like crazy from school. Could you guys just uh, keep talking and I will be back shortly. <laughs> you know, Julie, <clears throat> Julie, that's a great talk about the manual machines because we've been through a whole bunch of them and I think the cool part is using it as a letter press like you said so yeah. the manual machines do have that advantage they can be the letter press they can also be an embossing machine um, you know with embossing yeah. carrier. so that's I mean I was going to say, Joe, like, I totally agree with you because I think people always say, like, should I get a manual or should I get an electronic? And, I mean, I hate to be the bearer of your wallet is going to hate me, but you kind of need both. <laughs> yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Well, now, yeah. I, mean, I think your point, <clears throat> the whole reason I migrated away from the original Cricut, so it's been a while, Melody, don't yell at me, but the original Cricut, it was kind of stuck with cartridges, and the stuff I make... I'm not going to find it on a cartridge. I really wanted to do my own thing, and I started right. using shortcuts a lot. Then Cricut, you know, had a falling out with the whole shortcuts a lot thing, you know, and then I looked for another machine. But I love the creativity that you can say, look, I need a shape like this, and if you want to do something precise, you know, pop-up cards where things have to fit together very well, or yeah. I've even done paper clocks, literally clocks made out of paper. Yeah. Years and stuff have to fit perfect being able to design that in any tool you want, Adobe Illustrator, put it in an SVG and use it with 
I think all the machines that we're talking about it here. I'll do it now. That's right. Yeah, you can do that with the Cricut Explorer. I love the way the Cricut Explorer scores things for you. So you can set the score lines where you want and make all the pop-up things and 3D images and all that by just setting it up any way you want and then you can save it and share it easily and you just click a button and it will score it and cut it. Yep, yep. And I never thought I'd want a big machine like Scrappy Diva. You have that huge machine behind you, but now oh, I, have, I have little machine at home. I have a big 24-inch. It's still not as big as that, it looks like. But I run vinyl through on rolls and make yep. pieces that go as big as the whole wall, you know, that you supersize up. Exactly. Um, but I like toys. I like tools. I like toys. I know, Julie, you like tools, too, because in the last, when we filmed Scrapbook Soup, I brought some toys or tools on, and you were like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think as crafters don't, I mean, the thing is, like, I like my brain, and my brain works, but my hands don't do as good as my brain, if you know what I mean. Like, I can't always get the things that are in my imagination to come out of my hands. I just don't have the technical skills. And the thing that I love about machines is they allow me to fill that gap gap between what my technical abilities are and what my imagination is going to offer. So, you know, and, and I think like everybody's imagination is different, everybody's comfort with, you know, some people are comfortable with computers, so they're happy with a machine that hooks up to a computer. Other people are saying, I don't want to deal with a computer, so they want a machine that doesn't. Some people um, are comfortable drawing, so they say, I want a machine where I can draw. Other people say, forget about it, I can't draw. What I want is the design that somebody else created, and that's why, I mean, that's why this market exists where there are so many options. I think the key to picking the right machine is really into knowing yourself. Like what is it that you feel really good about doing? Like what is it that you really feel like is your strong talent and that you likely will actually do? And that kind of leads you towards, I think, the right machine for you. Exactly, because they're all great machines. Um, you can do so many different things. It really depends what you like, how, your, your comfort level with the computer and learning. All those things go into it. And I think, too, folks need to look at <clears throat> how you learn and where you go for support. So, like, in my case, folks know I work with K&K. &K. I give everybody my cell phone number. I take calls at night. I take calls on the weekend. I take calls on Sunday. And I've had calls the night before Valentine's Day where somebody's like, ah, I'm trying to make a Valentine's Day card, and I'm stuck, and I need help. So I think besides training... Look at your whole support network. You know, if all of your friends are using a certain kind of software um, or a certain kind of machine, that might play into it as well because you know you can go to them, you know, to get that kind of help. Like in, in, in my case, as an example, you know, the, the Zing uses this software. It's, it's uh, Make the Cut. But Make the Cut, I think, right now supports like 14 different kinds of machines, if I got that right. So if it doesn't even matter necessarily what machine you're using. It might be that, hey, I want to use the same software that my friends are using, so if we get stuck, we mm -hmm. can help each other, we can share files. Exactly. So in addition, look at, besides features and what you're going to use it for, I'd look at how you're going to learn, how you get support, what your friends have. Uh, one big question that I was getting from um, viewers kind of leaving in comments is that they want a machine that they feel like they can, that is very user friendly, which I think a lot of the machines kind of have gone to that what you see is what you get mode and, and um, is very user friendly. Does anybody, um, maybe, um, maybe Julie, you're with a scan and cut, it really is scan and cut, correct? It really is scan and cut. I mean, the thing that, uh, the, the reason that when I talk about the scan and cut is I always talk about it as a possibilities machine is because, so yes, if you want, you take it out of the box, you plug it into the wall, it's got a touch screen on it, you start pressing the different buttons and you can, you either go scan or you go pattern. So you either want to scan something in or you want to go ahead and cut a pattern that's existing already in the machine. So that's pretty easy. But then they've also made it possible if you want to use your computer, there's a great free online software you can use now that allows you to design all sorts of stuff. It's now tablet friendly so you can do it on your iPad or even on your phone. You can muck around and save designs in there and now you can actually wirelessly between the machine and your tablet or between the computer and your machine send designs back and forth for editing and stuff. Or you can take a SVG file on a little USB thumb drive and plug that into your machine. I mean literally I think for me like I know 
brother that makes a scan and cut really listens to its customers and one of the things that people asked for after the first generation of the scan and cut was they wanted more ways to be able to get files the built-in scanner is amazing and fantastic but sometimes you have a file that already exists or you want to download a free SVG file or somebody's given you a file and now there are three different ways to get those files straight into your machine which I think I think is really cool so for me I always tell people it's a choose your own adventure machine you know the screen just takes you do you want to do this or do you want to do this and you just choose which choice you go down that path and boom you know you're ready to start cutting or drawing or scoring or doing whatever it is that you want to do what's the price point on that machine well here's a really exciting part so I just did HSN for the last two days so on HSN they were offering uh, a bundle that was and I think this is slightly lower than obviously in the normal market but it was two ninety nine, which really puts it in the range of I think where a lot of the electron other electronic cutters are right now which is exciting there is a fancier model that I think is more expensive than that but um, I think it's a really good price point for what it does. I used to have this dollar rule. I mean, you're called the frugal crafter, so I'm going to say that you're a lot more frugal than I am, Lindsay. I mean, I'm, I'm the New know. York crafter. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but what I was going to say, is I used to have this rule all the time where I would say, for every dollar that something costs, you have to be able to use it on that many projects. So like if a stamp set was $5.99, in my brain I'd be thinking, okay, I want to think of six projects before I press purchase that I can use this on. And if I can think of six projects, then it's worth the money. So for me at two ninety nine, the question is, can I think of 300 things that I can do with my scanning cut? And the answer is... Yes, I can. And if we had it all the time in the world, I'd start listing them. And I think that's the thing about all the electronic cutters, I will say that, is that I think you, there are so many things that you can do with them. Pop-up cards, wedding invitations, birthday, home decor, you know, quilting, sewing, applique, um, all sorts of fun stuff that you don't have to think so hard. It's really just finding the machine that's right for you. Um, okay, thank you. Melody, what about the Cricut? What's the price point on the Cricut? Well, there's two options now. They have the Cricut Explore 1, which is more economical. It's $199. And then they have the Cricut Explore Air, which includes built-in Bluetooth. The, you can buy a Bluetooth adapter for the Cricut Explore 1. And it does everything else. The Cricut Explore Air has two heads, so you can have one for the blade and one for the score or a pen. And the Cricut Explore 1 can do the same thing, but you just have to exchange out the blade, which is really easy. You just flip a thing and stick it in. And, and it does... That? Excuse me? How user-friendly would you say the Cricut Explore oh. machines are? I think it's extremely user-friendly. It is so easy. <laughs> um, well, Lindsay, you know, with the cartridges, how it used to be, how you used to have to find the images and press the, the buttons on the uh, keypad, that's gone. Mm -hmm. Everything is on screen, and you choose your yeah. images, and you've got the whole image already there, and then you cut out the different parts. It's really I think, to learn. I think it's much easier than the old Cricut expression, because you can see all the images with the layers, and you just click on them to put them on your canvas. You can just size it any way you want, and click go, and load up your mat, and you're done. But you can also scan in your own images and if you have a home scanner like if you wanted to do a stamp you could stamp it, use your home printer with a scanner, scan it in and you can upload pictures. You can um, This month they're gonna allow you to upload patterns and pictures and cut them out in any shape and fill your images with the patterns. The I, only thing so much. I have with the with the crickets, do you still have to be online to cut them or if you were just using your cartridge, could you do that offline? I guess I don't understand how the the, the new software works with those. Yeah, everything you do is online. Sorry. They're gonna make it so the mobile apps you can do offline. So you can use it on your iPhone and iPad right now. They're gonna be changing it so those can be offline. But the reason they do it online is so you can um, yeah, Karen is showing it, the app. The reason they do it online is so you can get all of the images right at your fingertips. You can s design a project from any computer anywhere. You don't have to, it's the software is online, so you can get it from anywhere. You can be at work and design something or in your car, on your phone, or anywhere, 
and design it, save it, and when you get home, you can cut it. On your oh, phone. That, uh, um, Scrappy Diva is showing us something. Let's see. I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. Whoops, sorry. It's kind of crooked on my iPhone. There but we go. Sign and cut direct from my phone. I think a couple of the things that, Melody, you mentioned are things folks should consider as well when they're looking at cutting machines. Like the first machines I used, they weren't really portable. They were luggable. I mean, <laughs> I could throw it over my shoulder, but it was a pain. So are you going to take this somewhere with you? Are you going to go to crop? I'm not a scrapbooker, but are you going to go to crops? And, you know, do you want to carry this thing with you or not? Um, so you might consider that. Is that important to you? You might even want to consider power supply. The Zing, as an example, can plug into a cigarette lighter, <clears throat> which I know sounds weird, but people take it in their car. <laughs> oh, sure. And, you know, what's interesting is that I have whole entrepreneurs who throw a Zing in the back of a van. They drive down little town streets. They stop at stores and say, hey, your store doesn't have a great sign. I can design one for you right now. Go out to the van, cut it in vinyl, and you've got a sign. Um, so I would think about transport, yeah. you know, is it transportable, is it luggable, can you carry it, um, what power supply does it use, especially for folks who are looking at things in, in other countries. I think Julie's point of how many things you can make is something fantastic to think about, and, and think about the evolution of machines. I mean, Melody mentioned the cricket that has two heads, so I can say, you know, the, the two-head thing is so cool. The new K&K &K machine that's coming out, the Force, you can see two heads here holding a regular marker. Um, I think the next step where you're going to see makers using these kinds of things, and here the machine cut out eighth of an inch PVC pipe. Wow. Eighth of an inch PVC pipe, this thing cut. So now for someone like you know myself, who I would say I'm probably more maker than crafter, you know, I don't. I don't do scrapbooks. They're beautiful. They're. I just don't do them. I always tell folks I have great nieces and nephews. They love me. When I die, they want my money. They don't want my pictures. So, but for a maker, I can cut eighth of an inch pipe now with these things. I mean, the market is changing so much. It's just you fantastic. Can buy your own stuff. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. What's the price point on those, Joe? Um, the Zing, which is the machine that you can get today. Um, the Zing starts at, uh, let me think about this, it starts at 449 and then you can add things like a travel bag and all that kind of stuff. Um, the Force, which is the new machine we've just been releasing sneak pictures of, that's the, the picture that I just showed you here is the Force. Um, you can get an idea what it looks like. People are just loving this little, like, blue, I don't know if you can see it yet or not, but the whole like blue light thing and, and the little built-in tray table for your material. So if you're putting it on a table, your mat doesn't go catty, crooked on the ends and all that kind of jazz. I don't have a price point on that, but I, I, I'm pretty confident it's going to be a little higher than the Zing. So there, the Zing is 449 You know, we've talked about the Cricut at 199 Julie talked about the Scan and Cut around 299 The Zing, 499 I think the Force is going to be a little higher than that. Not much, but a little bit. Now, do you think the prices um, have anything to do with whether they are like a consumer grade or professional grade? With it, because I always think of like the the clicking cut being more of like a, a professional sign cutting machine. Is that correct, or um, is that also more of a consumer model? I, I do think that there's there's a the K and K. The reality is, you're not going to see the K and K machines at a big box store. And that's because there are certain brands that really lock in exclusivity at these big box stores. So consumers aren't exposed to it as much. Um, I do think the K&K might be considered more industrial. Their history is they were large. They still today make large vinyl cutting machines for sign places. Um, they're moving into the makerspace with the force. They sell a 3D printer as well. But the Zing is 95% metal. There's just a couple little plastic screws on it. So to me, that tends to be more industrial than some of the ones you look like, you know, that people look at and say, oh, that's cute. Oh, I really like that, you know. And heavy. <laughs> Sounds heavy. <laughs> um, actually, the, the Zing itself isn't really bad in terms of weight-wise. Um, let me think about it here. It cuts, it fits 18-inch material. It'll cut up to 14 inches. Um, it has more force than any other cutting machine on the market. It's only about 5 inches tall by 6 inches by about 2 feet and it only weighs 12 pounds. So if you can carry a bag of sugar, you can carry a zinc. Wow. 
Um, I have a question for a scrappy diva. I had a um, lady leave a comment that she purchased. Now you're a Silhouette user too, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. She had um, finally saved up and purchased a Silhouette, and then it's it's just sitting on her table. She was intimidated to take it out of the box. She said it sat for two weeks in her box before she took it out, and now she doesn't feel like she uses it, and she feels bad that she invested that money and hasn't used it. Do you have any advice for her? Absolutely. Tell her, first of all, to subscribe to my channel. <laughs> I, have oh, tons. <laughs> I have tons of um, beginner videos for Silhouette uh, and in my group as well. I'm always in there helping people with things and there's a, a, many people in there who are helpful. Start small. Start with a very simple project. Um, make a title and get to get a feel of how that ha works in the machine, how you cut. And that's with all of the machines too, is you start small. The Silhouette software is does have a steeper learning curve than some, but it's not bad. A lot of people have learned how to use it. So you need to start small and you know progress from there. Don't you see a lot of projects that people are making, you want to make everything. Just don't jump in feet first. Take your time and get some help and it'll be okay. There are people who have sat with it for months or even a year and haven't taken it out of the box because they're afraid. And what happens then, they may have a defect in the machine and then it's out of warranty. So for sure you want to get it out of the, out of the box and get started. That's what really happens? good advice. Is there a software that you recommend using for the Silhouette? Um, yes. <laughs> cuts a lot. Shortcuts a lot is fantastic because it actually does a better job of the cuts. The, the cuts are more detailed. Um, it's you'll have to pay for that. Um, it's about sixty dollars, but you can save your files in SVG format, uh, which is something that Silhouette Studio doesn't let you do. If you use Silhouette Studio to design your own files, they're going to be locked in that program. Um, what else? You can also use other software to design. Uh, SVG files that you can cut with the silhouette. Okay, so basically she hasn't wasted her money though. She has, she's invested in a quality product and she needs to just use it, correct? Right, that's right. Find a good group that she can join. My group is Silhouette SD and Cameo users. Um, find somebody that you like to follow on uh, YouTube and you're gonna learn. I think the problem that she's talking about though people have with every machine yeah. Um, <clears throat> Software-wise, I'm going to give a shout out to Make the Cut. What I like about Make the Cut, similar to Shortcuts a lot, is it works with lots of machines, including the Silhouette, the KNK, the Pazzles, the Black Cat Cougar. Um, so there's a whole list there of some of the stuff that Make the Cut works with. But I think this happens all the time. I had a woman buy a Zing, delightful woman, and of course she had to buy the the biggest package I have. It has fabric blades, thick material blades, regular blades, the bag. She even bought the adapter. And I said, are you really going to take this with you on in a car? And she was like, well, we have a boat. I may want to use it on the boat. I thought, really? <laughs> you really are going to try to use a container on a boat? But you know, she went gangbusters and bought everything. And then about two months later called me and said, I need to return it. I want to return everything. And I thought, well, why? How can I help? What's wrong? If it's broken, we have a one-year warranty. And she said, well, I don't know what to make. And I thought, what? And she said, well, I like the cricket because I put in a cartridge and I just say, I want a dog. And I picked it and it would cut. But here, like, what should I cut? And I thought, you can cut anything you want. You know, what kind of problem is this? And the way she got over the curve, this sounds crazy. I hope she never watches this. I can't tell you her name. But I gave her homework assignments. I was like, I want you to cut the words happy birthday that's big enough to fit on an A2 card and I want you to send me a picture when it's done. <laughs> and after she get, she did that and sent me the picture, she's like, well, what should I make next? I was like, well, how about, <laughs> where have you been on vacation? Oh, we went to Orlando. Well, find the SeaWorld logo on the web and I want you to cut it, copy it, paste it, cut it. Oh, okay. Well, we went through like two or three weeks of this until finally she said, oh, I kind of get it. You can kind of do whatever you can think of. And I thought, uh, <laughs> yeah, hello, hello. But I think that I think a lot of people, not just cutting machines, I can't tell you how many craft supplies my partner and I buy, especially my partner, he's the shopper, <laughs> that still are in the bags because you're not buying even the product, you're buying the aspiration that you will make something gorgeous with this product. And, you know, sometimes it just never happens. There's only so many hours in the day. Oh, but there are so many people, too, that come online and they say, oh, look what I made. I can't believe it. I, I made this. 
and they're so proud of themselves. But I yeah. bet for all of us on this panel, isn't that the best feeling? Julie, I bet you get folks who make stuff even with your... Julie has phenomenal stencils. I oh, yes. Shout out for her stencils. <laughs> And I bet she glows when somebody says, look what I made with your stencils. There's probably times, too, you look and Julian think like, oh, man, you made that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing is, like, I think I am always excited when people make something that they love. And it doesn't, and this is what I tell people when I teach all the time. Um, I say, I don't care whether I like what you made because I don't have to go home with it. You have to like what you made. And like, that's the most important thing of all. And I think one of the things about, I mean, I hate to get all super philosophical here for a second, but just get, bear with me for one second. And just to say that, like, I think art is healing and art is important and craft is important and craft is healing because. <laughs> when you make something with your hands and you put yourself into it and you're proud of what happens I think that is like it's a it's a changing thing and it makes you feel a certain way about yourself and and I again like anything that helps me feel better about myself so if a cutting tool helps me to feel like I'm a better artist if it makes my project look prettier or neater or anything like that I think that's a wonderful use of my money I think it's a wonderful use of my time I think it's a wonderful use of my energy and and I just to pick piggyback on what everyone else is saying I know that it can be can be, can be scary, scary to get something a new a tool or a new anything and think I paid all this money I'm going to break it you know or I'm gonna do something wrong right I mean trust me I know I'm the klutz of the century but the thing is like anything you will never be able to use it unless you try you will never be able to be good at it unless you try. And I always tell people when you get something new, you know, just start pushing the buttons. And as long as you know how to, you know, that where the stop button is, you're totally fine. And these machines are all set up with so many safeties in place that you really can't, you know, screw them up spectacularly unless you're really trying very, 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 very very hard. So I would just encourage people to be brave, take it out, play with it, see what happens, you know. Um, I think you'll be surprised by how much you can learn. I mean, all the time when people ask me, well, how did you learn about this and how did you learn about that? And I say, you know, the reason I know things about paint is because I just started painting. And the reason I know things about the scanning cut is because I just started scanning and cutting. Literally, the first time I went to a focus group for the scanning cut, I didn't know anything about it. They just they were like, here's this new machine, um, try it out and see what happens. There was no manual, there was no nothing. They plunked them at the table in this room full of people and we were just like, okay, push, 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 push. And we and it, it was so intuitive to figure out what it did and then your brain started moving about what you could make with it. And I think it's exciting to have something new to play with. Oh, and yeah. everybody screws up. Everybody screws up. You may not see it, especially, you know, everybody over here, all the other pictures you're seeing, they're rock stars compared to me. So they it appears they never make a mistake. But I've I've never I can tell you, I do. Like I did a video with Natalie Kalbach for her big jump start, creative jump start, a very cool thing you should all learn about for it happens every January. And I was making an acrylic skin, and I'm like, so you take the acrylic glaze and you squirt it out like this, and nothing was coming out, and Dopey Me never took the lid off and peeled off the little piece of paper. <laughs> and that's on my video, and it went to thousands of people around the world. And, and folks, only a couple folks wrote me who were professionals and said, I can't believe you didn't edit that out. Do you really want people to see you didn't, you were stupid enough to not open the bottle? And I thought, yes, because other people are stupid enough that you don't open the bottle, yeah, and you're stupid enough that... I think comments that people love it when I leave my mistakes in. Yeah, because, because people cut mistake. off the paper, and the paper flies through the machine, and the pressure's wrong, and the speed's wrong, and, you know, all kinds of stuff can happen. <laughs> like, Do you know how many times I press that undo button? <laughs> Every project. <laughs> And I was going to say, in a lot of the Facebook groups with Cricut, people are so afraid to open the machine... And I think just like what Julie said, it's the same thing. They're just they just have to do it and try it. And the Cricut Explorer is so easy. You set it up in less than five minutes, and you have a project done. It takes you through the steps of everything, and they just have to try it. They're not going to break it. And be smart about what you try. Try some like if you're going to cut a vinyl, the giant piece of vinyl you've never cut before, and you want to make one of those big, like I get a lot of folks asking to make those eight by ten trees without the leaves, you yeah. know, the silhouette, mm -hmm. and they put them on the wall, and then they hang photos on it. Mm -hmm. Don't shove in 20-inch roll of vinyl and try to cut this giant piece first shot. You know, I like big. 
I like to make big projects. I like big things. I think Julie likes big <laughs> projects too. Julie likes big, you know. But you practice on something little first till you can handle big, and then you know. Okay, I got the settings right. Off we go. So be smart about what you practice on and practice, and you're going to screw up, and nobody's going to know but you. You know, your what? doctor has screwed up a million times. When you go to their office, they still have a diploma on the wall that says graduated. You don't know if they came in first or last. <laughs> they see all the great projects everybody is sharing and posting, and it just intimidates people. Yeah, but they're like, oh my somewhere. God, I don't know how they did that. They all started somewhere. Yeah, well, they're, I mean, they're afraid they can't make such wonderful projects with their machine because they don't know how. They just have to try it and start. Just cut a few things out at once. And follow us. Well, yeah. you know, they say that comparison is the thief of joy, and I think yeah. that that is really, really true. I mean, if I compared myself to all the pictures of unbelievably gorgeous and thin women on the Internet or all the unbelievably clean homes or all the perfectly, you know, yeah, the meals on that on look like, <laughs> right? I mean, you would be completely paralyzed, so why should craft be any different? You put your best out there when you post pictures on the Internet. You don't post the piles of things that didn't didn't work out. When I'm prototyping, when I'm in like my prototyping stage where I'm trying a project out, I go through reams of paper and fabric and other stuff trying to figure out how things are going to fit together, when it's going to work, and then I take one little picture of the end result and be like, oh, look what I made. And it's not like it just came out like that. You know, I actually had to try. I think, too, that means you should pay attention to who your friends are, right? Because... I may not post my disaster on Facebook, although that's happened, but I have some really good friends. Terry Sproul, she does a live web show every Tuesday night that I work with her on, and I call her and say, I don't have a clue how to do this. Do you know how to do this? I've asked Julie questions about how to do work with stencils. I've asked Natalie Callback how to make a skin, and I, you know, if people think I always know what I'm doing. You need some friends that you can go to where you're okay. They're okay if you're a hot mess. And there's times, you know, my project is a hot mess, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So you should surround yourself with friends who can tell you, I can help, or I can make that better, or yeah, that's not great, but let's change this instead. And then, like Julie said, you can post the finished phenomenal thing, you know, unless you want to post a video where you can't open the bottle of paint first. You know, that happens. <laughs> that's like the perfect analogy of this hangout because like a half an hour before it began, I was on the phone with Joe. I was emailing Melody. <laughs> we didn't know if we were going to go on live. I didn't have the right thing scheduled. It was it was crazy, but, you know, you guys have my back, and that was totally awesome. I am glad you did follow our advice and switch from pajamas to a real top. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I was... You know, I was pleased about that. Yuli usually films in the bedroom. Her podcast, I'm sure, happens there. If you haven't listened to her podcast, it's fabulous. But it's about crafting. It's about crafting. <laughs> you almost got me in big trouble there, Joe. I, I had to think about that. And look at Melody. Have you looked at Melody and Scrappy Diva's background? I'm in a horrible corporate office. Julie and Lindsay have beautiful art in the background. Melody is like in a paper. She's gone to heaven. I don't even know if that... It exists for real, and it's sorted by shade. <laughs> what the heck? Oh yeah, that God. took a long time. <laughs> and you know, I want to send her just one new pack of glue that's slightly different than the rest. No. And then I want to know if she has to move everything to put that one in, or like, what we, happened? We found a few, shade, a few shades that were different. We're like, well, this one is a different color than all these. It doesn't match. There's only two papers. So we put it in the scrap bin. <laughs> Oh, so I have to send you a pack of 20 Otherwise, phones. Otherwise, you have to move all of these to make another spot. I know. I'm dying to trigger that effect. <laughs> oh, that's mean. Okay, guys. I would like you to share your number one tip for um, using your electronic die cutters. Um, my favorite tip is when my mats stop getting sticky, I wash them with a dish rag and some uh, dish soap, and that usually brings back the sticky. Um, and if it doesn't, then I use Quilter's basting spray, and I'll mask off the edges of my mat with, with a painter's tape, and I spray a light coating of the basting spray and let it dry, and it makes it sticky again. And that tip has saved me a lot of money. So I'm hoping that maybe you guys have some money-saving tips for electronic die cutting you can share with the, uh, the audience today. Melody, you want to start? No, because I haven't had time to think. But I will say this. I agree with you on the mat. And... The other day, well, I wiped it with a baby wipe, 
uh, to clean off any fibers and I was in a hurry and so I remembered that heat helps the stickiness come back also if it's cold or winter time it's not as sticky but if it's warm in the summer it's stickier so I put my heat tool to my mat and it got sticky really fast oh great tip anyone else I would say that for the, I don't know about the other cutting machines, but for the Zing, you can control how much of the blade is sticking out of the blade holder. We call it blade exposure. And mm -hmm. a lot of folks, if they have trouble cutting, they keep cranking out more and more of that blade. So pretty soon they're cutting vinyl, but it looks like an X-Acto knife at the end of their cutter. More is not always better. So really get your blade exposure correct. It only has to be thick enough to go through the material without digging a channel through your mat. And I find that's a very big mistake. Folks have too much blade, and they crank the speed up like a Ferrari, and that's not always going to lead to success. A good tip. Julie, do you have a tip? I do. I have two tips. So one of them is not money saving, but I think it's important, which is, um, and this is the tip I used to give when I used to teach sewing classes all the time, which is, you know, you sewing machines are spectacularly expensive. When you start getting into like really high end, I mean, there are fifteen thousand dollar sewing machines. We're talking about talk about a Ferrari, anyway. But um, and people are really reluctant to change their needles, but you know that two dollar needle makes a huge difference in making your project look better. And I would say the same thing about blades, which is sometimes when your cuts are uh, your machine's been cutting fine, and it's been cutting fine, and suddenly it's not. Like instead of going through enormous Sturm and Drang, like really think about just changing your blade. It's really worth it to get a nice clean cut. Um, and then my money saving tip, a little bit of money saving, is think about this. So. If you use the weld functions, you can take a very simple design and you can now make like 25 different things about it. So here's the example I would give you. If you have something, this is just on my desk, it's a little Tupperware, okay? So if you just have like a little circle shape, if you repeat the circle and over and over, right, okay, then you create a stencil really easily that's just circles. If you use the weld tool and you weld, you know, like four of them together, then you've got a cool and interesting stamp. If you start putting them in each other so that they're a loop, right, then you create and start, you know, welding those shapes together, then you've got more interesting things. I'm just telling you that the thing with electronic die cutters is to not just think about like, hey, here's a design that I already like that's already made. It's, hey, here's a design that now I can make into a million things and really opens up the possibility and then you get your 300 projects out of your machine with literally like a single shape. It's kind of amazing. So I would just say let your imagination go and try to think bigger than just what already exists into what could be. Oh, that's great. And you mentioned fabric, and I wanted to bring this up because a lot of people have talked about cutting fabric on in die cutters. I haven't done it in my electronic one. Um, but Julie, do you have any tips on cutting fabric with the die cutter? Electronic I die cutter? do. So I actually have a video on my YouTube channel. And by the way, the profile that I have for this um, Google Hangout, I don't think is attached to my actual um, the Google profile that I use on my YouTube channel, which is Balls or Designs. So if you go looking for my YouTube channel, it's under Balls or Designs. But um, what I was going to say is I have a video there called like Julie's Four Fabulous Tips for Cutting Fabric. And it shows you like um, that the mat needs to be super sticky in order to hold the fabric to keep it from moving because if you think about it, fabric when it shifts with the blade, that's where the real problem is. And then it also talks about using fusible with your fabric or not. It talks about blade depth. And just as Joe mentioned, the scan and cut, and I'm sure the other machines do this too, not only can you adjust the blade exposure, but you can also adjust the pressure and the speed. And you need to adjust all those things to sort of get it just right. But I've had enormous luck cutting fabric with the scan and cut, partially because Brother, you know, is a sewing machine company. So they actually developed the scan and cut thinking first of it as a quilter's tool, not as a like paper crafting tool. And then they realized, oh, of course, this works in paper crafting as well. So um, fabric has some very particular things. Oh, sorry. And one other thing that I think is really important about fabric is that, you know, when you do a lot of fabric stuff, you have separate scissors for your fabric and separate scissors for your paper because um, paper dulls scissors. We all know this, right? When you cut a tree, it dulls it, right? So. Same with your blades. Keep two separate blades, one for paper, one for fabric, and then your fabric cuts will always be nice and clean because it will, uh, that blade will never have been dulled by fabric. Awesome, awesome. Did anybody else have a money-saving tip they wanted yes, yes. to share? <laughs> Finally thought of some. Um, <laughs> one is that when you're 
um, designing something and you're figuring out your settings, because you should always figure out your settings, especially if it's a new material, practice on a small design. Don't try to do your whole design as your practice cut, because you're going to waste all that material if it's not the right settings for your for the material that you're working with. For example, if you're doing a vinyl piece um, and you have something that's going to be a 12 by 12 piece, don't practice by putting the whole piece of vinyl in there. Practice on a little circle or a square to figure out your settings. And then the other thing is when you get stuck on something, ask questions. Don't wait until you're so frustrated or until you've wasted all kinds of material. Ask questions. The only dumb question is the one you don't ask. Great advice. Okay, so um, I think this probably wraps it up. You guys have given everybody so much information, and I don't want to overwhelm anybody, um, but I'd like to go around and have you guys tell everyone where they can find you so they can learn more about the die cutters that you use and, um, you know, see what cool craft products you do. Uh, so let's start with Scrappy Diva. Where can people find you? Lots of places. <laughs> My cricket group and Melody is in there with with me and Lori as well is called I Love My Cricket, I L U B My Cricket. Um, my silhouette group is uh, Silhouette SD and Cameo Users. My YouTube channel, is, you'll find me as Scrappy Diva. And what else? My blog is Scrappy Diva Blogspot. No, Scrappy Diva. Bl I forget. Scrappy Diva. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, I remember Scrappy Diva blog, blogspot.com. Yeah, I think if you Google Scrappy Diva, you'll come right up too, because that's how I found you when Melody um, recommended you. Okay. Melody, where can everyone find you? Um, well, I'm at YouTube at uh, Melody youtube.com slash Melody Lane and Melody Lane 815 is sort of my name for Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and I'm on everything. I also do Periscope also sometimes. Uh, that's the live videos on the app. And I have, I design um, digital paper now too. So you can find that at MelodyLineDesigns.com. Great. Julie, and also on Facebook and the Cricut groups. I'm in lots of groups for crafting. I have a group called Craft Hoarders, which is for all types of crafting, not just die cutters. It can be for anything. Oh, thank you. Sorry to cut you off. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, that's okay. I thought I was done, and then I thought, oh, yeah, there's more. <laughs> oh, wait, there's more. Julie, what about you? So you can find everything for me at balzerdesigns.com. That's B-A-L-Z-E-R. And pretty much everywhere online, I'm Balzer Designs. So hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, and on YouTube and everywhere else because I'd love to see you. Awesome. And Joe, where can people find you? Um, you should be able to see it down there. My website is create, the letter N, like Nancy, craft.com. That's different than the British TV show. Let me tell you, I had the name first. So createandcraft.com is my website. You can sign up for my email list down there. Um, Facebook.com slash create, the letter N, craft. Um, and you can find me on YouTube and Pinterest. And I'm thrilled to be a guest on the upcoming season of Scrapbook Soup TV, hosted by the phenomenal... Julie over there, and she got she had me on twice, even though every time I come on, I am a hot mess. But she's calm, she straightens everything out. So I want you to be sure to look for that this fall, Scrapbook Soup TV. Go to their website, go to your PBS station to find out where it is. Phenomenal crafts. It's more than scrapbooking. I, I've never made a scrapbook. She's never made me make one either, thank God. So <laughs> be sure to check that out. Books. I make you books. Make, you make beautiful handmade books, though. And clocks and light up signs and remember I like big so I gotta go big make big I like big so find me on Facebook on our website and on Scrapbook Soup as a guest with host Julie Payfan Balls. Well, I'll pay you your money later. <laughs> well, that's awesome, guys! I want to thank you all so much for being here. I want to thank everyone who watched and if you check out the you the replay on YouTube, I'm gonna have links to all of the guests websites so you can go find them and follow them uh, from there thank you all so much for being here I appreciate it I know it was last note last minute notice and you made time so that is just um, very hey, awesome thank you very much thank yeah, you thanks so for much. Having it. you guys all have a great night you happy too. crafting bye, bye. bye.